Hey everyone, my name is Pritam and you're watching Tech with Pri. Welcome to my channel and I'm back with another exciting technical video. And this is the 17th video of our newly created technical series called ServiceNow Developer. So in my last video, we have understood a very important concept which is the JSON object and we have seen how with the help of client callable script include we can return JSON object that means we can return multiple values from the script include and then we can use it in the client script also I have shown you that how you can convert the return value as a string you know with the help of JSON dot stringify and also how you can get back to the object from in the client script with the help of the JSON dot per se right so I have worked with an use case to clear your idea so guys if you missed that video I would suggest you go and watch the video it was very very important the link will be there in the description and also you can find the link here on your screen right now in this video and also for upcoming next two videos I will cover three complex use case of script include so in each video I will cover one use case because I don't want to make it a very large video so I will make it in part by part right so in today's video we will uh, solve the first use case and then in the next video we will solve the second use case and also we'll work on the third use case in the third video the more use case you practice the more you will become confident while working as a service now developer for your client right so this use case are nothing but the scenario you will face being a service now developer not maybe the same kind of scenario but you know you can use the same kind of logic so it's very very important you practice this use case in your uh, personal developer instance you know so that you become confident and deal with some other more even more complex stuff right so make sure you watch the full video and trust me this is gonna help you a lot so let's jump into the first use case and let's start implementing it all right so use case number one create a new field called number of group member in the incident form and when you open the incident form and choose or change any assignment group it should display the number of group member available for the selected assignment group the next two use cases will be connected with the first one okay so we will increase the complexity step by step all right so let's understand this use case in a better way in my pdi and then we will solve it together okay so let's go all right so i'm in my personal developer instance guys and here what I'm going to do is that I will open the incident form to show you. So you can see this is the incident form and here we need to have a field called number of group member. So whenever we will choose this any kind of assignment group like for an example service desk, then it will show what are the number of members available in that particular group, right? So that's a good use case actually uh, because in sometimes being a service now developer, I will tell you from my own experience, you have to deal with stuff like that. What are the number of members? And based on that, you need to apply for them. You need to apply more logic right so let's try to solve it so first i will add a new field as per the requirement of the use case so i will go to the form layout so simply i'll create a new field so you can also create a new field from the table that would be more uh, relevant because you'd be able to configure a lot more dictionary fields but for the time being i am going to create from here so uh, number of uh, group members so number of group member okay number of group member and i can make it as a integer field because it will only display as the integer i'm going to click on add so it is added number of group members so i will make it available below assignment group okay so i'll choose the assignment group and it will show me the number of group member okay so i'm going to click on save so you can see we have the new field number of group member okay now you can right click and go to configure dictionary to configure this field if you want to do it okay but for the time being this is fine this is a new field is added so we need to create two things uh, the client script and the script include we need client script because we need to send the value of this assignment group to the script include and in the script include we will do the check that what are the number of member available in that in the particular assignment group and then we will return that value to the client script and client script will display this number here in the number of group member okay so let's do it so i will go to script include and also i will open the client script as you know i need both the thing so this is my script include but before that i will just turn off the previous script include that i've worked on okay so false 
get problem details false so if you miss those video guys it is available in my playlist so please go and check it out like i said more use case you will practice it will help you more right i'll do the same for the client script okay now i'm gonna create a new script include and i'm gonna give it the name so maybe like uh, get group member uh, make sure it's relevant of the work that you are doing okay and i'll make it client callable so you know the use of it so it extends the abstract ajax processor right so i will now declare our first function that is the uh maybe i'm gonna give it the name of like a grp group uh, member so grp member member uh, then colon then function so you know that's how we declare the function so no parameter so i'll just directly so what i'm going to do inside of the function is first i will get the value from the client script right so var uh, group name yes i'm going to get the group name here var group name equal to uh, this dot get parameter you know that's the thing we need to do to get the value from the client script so sysperm so this is the same name i have to use as a variable name from the client script right when we will send the assignment group so sysperm uh, maybe assignment group assignment group okay so this is the name all right now i will do var gr equal to new glide record again i would suggest you while you will do it for your project so make a good habit to practice it uh, to not use gr use a proper name right so just for you know saving some time i'm using gr here so now first of all in which table i need to check right because there is a table called sys underscore user underscore group which actually has list of the groups but if i need to see that what are the group members are there inside of the group we need to use the table called sys underscore user underscore gr member so you know that so if you open any group and uh, you'd see in the below right you know the group members number of group members so you if you if you check the table it is this sys user group member now we are going to do gr dot add query and for which group we are looking for so first of all group is the name of the field in the table and which group we are looking group name right so now gr dot uh, query now if uh, any record present the group name that we are sending if it is available in the table then what we want we need to count the number of users available in the group so basically what we can do is that we can uh, create a variable here called var count okay and we'll make it uh, as of now empty so var count and then we are going to use that count here so if any record found so we will store the number of records so to store number of record we are going to use gr dot get uh, row count so it will count number of row available that means after doing the filter so number of users are present that it will count uh, and it will store in the count variable okay and if if any group contains i mean no user if there is no user then we can write else and we can type count equal to so if there is no user in a particular group then what we'll do so it will display like there are no group member available so we can do a alert for that that's something we can do so that's will be the function okay i want to save it now i'm going to create the client script but this is a client callable so i have to give the role here i'll copy the script include name because i'm going to use it in the client script so i'll create a new client script to access the script include we have to use the glide ajax but before that i'll give it the name of the client script so maybe it's should be like a show grp group member something like that uh, the table will be incident okay and it will be ui type all type will be on change uh, the field name will be assignment group so whenever we'll change the assignment group this client script will be called and then we will access the script include to get the number of member and we'll display it in the incident form right so here simply i'm gonna do where ga equal to new glide ajax okay and uh, i'm gonna pass the name of the script include we already copied that and then ga dot at pam so first we know we have to give this is spam uh, name that's the default you could say that's a reserve variable name 
where I have to pass the name of the method. So what is the name of the method? So it is the uh, GRP member. So I'll pass the GRP member as a string, right? So all this thing I've already explained. So I'll do gr.atpam again. Now I need to use the same variable name. So that's the syspam assignment group. So syspam assignment group and then I will make it comma and then I'll pass here g underscore form dot get value of the assignment group field, right? So the name of the assignment group is this assignment group, assignment underscore group, right? So here we go. And now I will do the get XML. So now I will use get XML answer so that I can directly access the answer variable. So in the last video, I've explained that. Okay. So if you have any confusion, go and watch that video. And here I need to use the callback function. So I'm going to use the maybe name of the callback function as count member. Okay. And now here I will declare the callback function function count member. Okay. And here I'm going to get the response. Now the response will be stored in the response variable. So all we need to do is that we need to check if response response is nothing but this. Okay. We were not returning anything from the script include that's that's my bad. So I should return something, right? So it should return the count. Okay. So you have to be careful. You can do this kind of mistakes, silly mistakes. So I'm returning the count because we need to return something from the script include right to the client script. So now the return value of the count is coming in the response. So all I need to check is that if response is greater than zero, right? So if it is greater than zero, that means uh, that at least one user is there, right? So in that case, we will display. So uh, G underscore form dot set value here in the field of what is the name of the field that we created is the u number of group member let's just copy it u number of group member and here i'm gonna pass the response that's it so it will display it and if there is uh if there is no member is present in a particular group then i'll use else and it probably do an alert stating that alert and it will return the response. Okay. So we know that we have already done in the script include if any user found, then it will uh, do the get row count. And if there is no user found, then there are no group members. So count will return either the row count or the, the string or this string saying that there are no group members available, right? Based on that, we are accessing from the client script. That's it. So I think that should be okay. So I'll save it and I will now test it. Our first use case. So this is the place. I'm going to refresh it. All right. And I will choose assignment group like service desk. And you can see number of group member is three. So we will also confirm it by going into the assign to. You can see three. So now let's try with a network. And we have five group of member. So if I search it, you can see one, two, three, four, five. So it's working absolutely fine now. So our first use case is ready. And also we can try with some group which doesn't have any user. So do we have any group? I don't think we have any group which does not have any user, but we, for the testing purpose, we can do that. So sys user group uh, dot list. So we can remove uh, members from any group. So maybe um, this hardware group. So this I'm doing for the testing purpose. So we have seven members. So let's not do it <laughs> with the seven members. So maybe uh, we have software group. Do we have software? We have software group. And here we have six group member. So let's for the time being remove everyone. So basically I will select all and I will remove it here and save it. Okay. And now I'll refresh it and I'll try to choose this time assignment group as software. So software and you can see there are no group members available, right? So our first use case is working fine. 
Okay, so this is all about the first script include guys. I hope you like the video and do practice it in your personal developer instance. Also in the next video, we are going to deal with the use case number two, which is also part of the complex script include, right? And then we will do the final video. Uh, that is the third one, right? So make sure you are watching this. If you find this video helpful, hit the like button. If you have any doubts, any question, let me know in the comment section and also share this video with your friends and families so that it can reach out to many people. Also, don't forget to subscribe my channel and follow me on Instagram. So see you in the use case number two video. Bye bye. Take care.